let me bring in a scientist who knows these issues and the Barrier Reef intimately. Peter Ridd, thanks for joining us. I'll come to the Barrier Reef in a moment, but first up, this report of the Climate Council and that sort of language, given that we've seen floods, of course, and fires in recent times, is that is that sensible warm warning about what's going on or is that hysteria? It's hysteria. I compare them with Dementors from Harry Potter movies where they just try to suck the joy out of life by claiming there's disasters one after another. And it's disgraceful. When you look at the data on rainfall over long term, my colleague Jennifer Marahas has been doing this, you don't see any uh, terrifying trends. Look, we've had some horrific floods, say in Lismore, where they broke records. Um, but, you know, if you've got lots and lots of different records to break and a very, very short uh, record of, uh, you know, all these things that's only 100 years in, in the best of places, of course some years you're going to be breaking some records. Uh, you know, even Lismore, if you go back to the 1970s, in 1974, I think they had four major floods in just one year. Now, they weren't as bad as the one they had this year, but floods and droughts and fires, it's part of Australia, and they're just trying to scare us. Is there any evidence that they're getting worse? Well, no, not really. I mean, you, you, you're you going to break records periodically. That's just inevitable. But uh, extreme events uh, in terms of rainfall, no, they're, they're not getting worse. And there was a report that came out last uh, week which was also trying to scare us, but it was, for example, saying that cyclones are, are, if anything, getting less frequent. And the biggest cyclone in Australia by far, and the one that killed the most lives, happened in 1899. Yeah, look, honestly, uh, I spent a lot of time checking this stuff out and, and you can always find the precedent. You can always, there's very few records. As you say, it was a record flood in Lismore, but all the other flooding we've seen that people are going on about, the records haven't been broken. And uh, to watch the media would be to draw entirely the opposite conclusion. I want to show you another clip from the ABC and this relates to the UN's latest warning about the Great Barrier Reef. We have already seen what 1.2 degrees of warming has done, and we cannot afford to barrel down two degrees of warming, which is what it's looking like. And that means that we need to not approve any more coal, oil, or gas uh, explorations or developments whatsoever. That cannot be the case for Australia anymore. So until Australia commits to greater reductions in greenhouse gases by 2030, as you've outlined there, can it claim to be doing all it can for the reef? We cannot claim to be doing all we can for the reef at this point. We aren't. Peter, could you give us your assessment of the state of the reef and also tell us what on earth Australia's tiny contribution to global emissions reductions could do to the global climate and therefore the reef? Well, firstly, the Great Barrier Reef has got more coral cover on it this year than any time in on record since 1985 when we started. This despite supposedly having four devastating bleaching events in the last six years, which that scientist claimed killed huge amounts of coral. And clearly they were wrong. They got it wrong. We shouldn't trust virtually anything that these people are saying. Look, the Australians' contribution to uh, uh, greenhouse gases is very small, but coming back to one thing that she said there, you know, 1.2 degrees, supposedly they're saying by 1.5 or 2 degrees, we're going to lose 99% of the coral on Earth with a very, very small increase in temperature. Almost all the corals that live on the Great Barrier Reef also live in Papua New Guinea and Indonesia, where it's already 1 or 2 degrees hotter. We should actually be expecting corals to grow better. We know that corals grow about 15% faster for every one degree that there is an increase in temperature. It's a big flaw in their argument. A lot of coral already growing where it's already a lot warmer. Uh, but honestly, this stuff is never challenged. Thanks, Peter. I really appreciate your time.